Welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, we're going to be having a little discussion between me and you while I work on my bikes, which made me think of this topic and maybe even answer some of your questions that you sent me via Instagram. So you're ready for that. Get a cup of coffee and uh, let's get to talking about is N plus one better than N minus one? And I'm going to talk about both because right now I'm experiencing a little bit of is more bikes more better or more bikes more problems. So a little bit of backstory depending on how new you are to the channel. So last year in 2020, I essentially tried to dedicate the entire year to having one bike to rule them all and how well does that work. And basically I took my Cobalt Warhawk, which is their monster gravel carbon bike and used that for my gravel bike and my road bike, basically having two dedicated wheel sets for that. One 700 with a 32 to a 35C tire on there for road, and then a 650B by 2.2 tire wheel set for gravel. And I did periodically experiment with some 700C gravel tires for review that I put out on this channel as well. Now, I went full whole hog on this setup and did it like a complete Lego change. It wasn't just simply wheel swapping. I even switched out the gearing ratios and tried to make it as simple as possible to where in about 30 or so minutes, I could swap between either wheel size. And it worked out pretty well. Basically, as long as I knew what I was riding the following day and I could dedicate around 30 minutes the night before, I could easily swap everything out. So what I actually had for the drivetrain, I actually even had a different crank set. So I had two different ratios and I actually figured out and made a video that I'll put in the links below of how you can make one chain work for two different ratios if you do the math right. And I think I nailed it so I didn't have to just have a dedicated chain for each gear ratio. Then for the top end of the bike, I would even switch out the stem and the seat post to a rigid setup to lighten the bike up and make it more responsive for road and then put my redshift components, shock stop, seat post and stem on there for extra gravel comfort. And then I would just do that and it worked out really, really well. Now that bike wasn't the best at road on the more technical descents and the handling was a little bit more lazy than a traditional road bike. But for someone in a small apartment, especially having just a second wheel set is a lot easier to keep than a second bike. So there's a pro for N minus one. Now, the other thing is when it's a last minute impromptu ride and someone wants to go ride road or hit you up that same day and maybe you're at work and you don't have time to go switch everything out was a little annoying and I did miss out on some rides. So this year, as you may and hopefully have seen, I built my gravel bike for roadies and built my Cobalt Marauder, which is basically my road bike or all road bike that is probably going to see some gravel as well but that bike is gonna live on slicks essentially most of its life, minus me testing out some tires later down the line. And is it nice having just a bike I can literally just grab and go and clip into that's already set up? 100%. Is the bike lighter? Yes. I've already done my first impressions video and I just actually recently completed a 57 mile ride on it to dial in completely my fit to make sure that I don't need to order any different parts and testing out that new Burke saddle. So. I have to admit it is really nice doing that. But since I'm not riding each bike as often or switching things out, I'm seeming to notice that I'm spending more time working on them because right now, for instance, off of the corner that I'm gonna be doing, probably maybe even in this video, or maybe I'll do it off camera, I need to put new sealant in the Warhawk. The shifting somehow got off and I think I reinstalled the cassette without the cassette spacer when I was cleaning up the wheels last and so I got to redo that which means I got to redo the shifting and since I'm not constantly taking the bike apart and switching things out I'm seeming to notice less and needing to do more maintenance because the bike might sit for a little longer one week I might ride more road so the gravel bike might sit more stagnant and so I don't know if you've experienced this especially like Eric from Spindat with 15 different bikes and his video is always tinkering he's always got something to do and I totally understand why then you have my Poseidon Redwood, which is right above me that's off camera. That's my flat bar gravel bike. And I love that thing and it's super fun and get rowdy on. But since I probably ride that the least of the three bikes, that's the one that always needs typically sealant topped off because it always feels like if you don't ride the bikes, and at least my experience, the sealant tends to get stagnant and stick a lot sooner than if it's constantly moving around. So again, a bike that's not having the wheels taken off and on and kind of jiggled around and then hung and sat for a little while is a lot different than a bike that might be sitting for 
a few days to a week. Like I said, if I'm kind of dedicating a week to one style of bike and if I'm not just hopping back and forth regularly to both. And some weeks I ride once or twice and some weeks I ride four or five times. So it really does depend. So some bikes can't sit for quite a while. And I'm by no means complaining. I'm completely blessed with the setups that I have and I love the bikes that I own and I constantly love tinkering and working on them. But sometimes I just want to enjoy it and ride and not have to work on things constantly. So I wanted to see what your thoughts are in the comments below or if you've made a similar video, tag me in it or put the links in the comments below. What do you honestly think about is more bikes better? Would you rather play Legos and kind of scratch that itch of building a new bike, which I did really like, all the time because you're constantly working on it or is that just too much work and you'd rather pay extra money to have a whole new build for the convenience but maybe have to maintain them a little bit longer even if you got a higher end wheel set it's gonna be a lower operating cost to just have a separate set of wheels and maybe a few extra components like I did so realistically that is kind of the best bang for the buck but you are obviously paying for it in labor time that you would be doing dedicating between the two. But also you could just not care if it has to have a road wheel set up and just ride your gravel tires all the time. And I made a video talking about that as well. It's not the end of the world. So what do you think going into 2021? Are you a dual wheel set person? Are you a dual bike person? N plus one, N minus one. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below because this is something that again, today I'm definitely struggling with of just like, Ugh, gotta take the bike apart. I'm pretty sure I need to bleed the front brake as well. Don't know why again. What are your thoughts? All right, so as you can see here in the work stand, we have my Cobalt Warhawk, which is which was the dual purpose bike. So if you haven't seen this build series, I'll link that in the description below of how I basically try to build my ultimate monster gravel carbon bike build. And I've been riding this thing on a lot on 700 by 50s and been liking it versus the 650B. Maybe doing a comparison video later down the line once I get a little bit more of my complete thoughts on that. So make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on if you haven't already. But I just cleaned my chain. Apparently my camera died while I was doing that. So it is clean, trust me. And I'm gonna be trying out this new lube from Mountain Flow. You may have seen their Instagram ads or Facebook ads. That's honestly why I hit them up. Thought it was really interesting. They actually do a biodegradable plant-based chain lube series of lubes. And I will be breaking into another video about what style of lube to use in what scenarios because that was something that always eluded me when I first started cycling and didn't realize how crucial this can really help, especially now riding more gravel. But I really like this because obviously, especially if you are bike packing and bringing lube with you, I wanted to find something that was biodegradable so if it does get on the ground or anything, it's not harmful to any of the plants or environment around you. So I think it's really cool and I'm gonna see if it works out well. Let's just put this on and get to the first of the questions. So let's get into the next question and that was what kind of food do I like to eat on the bike? And if any of you don't already know, I am plant-based, but by no means are these things not delicious for anybody to eat no matter what your dietary restrictions are, but I tend to eat real food on the bike as much as possible. I cannot do an entire day just slamming goos and blocks and things like that. Do I use them still, especially on longer day rides? Totally but I try to limit that so that I'm eating more natural food that processes down and breaks down in my body a little bit easier. And I've always kind of had a slightly sensitive stomach. So especially for anybody who's experienced the same things, I tended to see that food, even though it is processed and I'm not making it from home, is something that works better for me at least. So here are a few items that I do carry pretty regularly. I always do try to mix it up and change things up, but I'll probably be doing some other recipe videos for more savory snacks that I can make myself, like a savory rice cake. I've been trying to dial in a, a recipe that I really like that I can share with you guys for something that you can easily make at home in bulk to save some money because cycling food can get kind of expensive. That's still delicious and gives you plenty of carbohydrates and energy on the bike. But here are my essential four kind of go-tos. I do love, ah, I do love fruit snacks. I know everybody loves gummy bears. These are kind of my healthier, easier alternative that I found at Smart and Final. These are a fruit and vegetable naturally flavored gummy. These don't have any artificial sourced sweeteners or colors or additives. So I prefer these just because they're more natural. So it'll be easier to break down. Next are gonna be these fig bars. I get these from Costco You can get them in a variety pack. They're really cheap. They're pretty good. And since there's two of them in here, you can just eat one and then kind of basically just fold the wrapper over it, put it back in your pocket, or you can eat both. Next are these vegan cookies. I don't actually like these chocolate ones that much because they tend to dry out, get kind of crumbly. My favorite is the peanut butter. That one lasts the longest without kind of getting crumbly like this one actually already is. 
Then I usually bring little snack baggies of other snacks. Um, my go-to is usually a variety of trail mix or mixed nuts for some saltiness. Again, having sweet stuff all day long gets really old for me and I don't really like that. Uh, so now let's sort of the shifting. I gotta put the cassette spacer back on and get the shifting dialed in. And then we'll talk about the next question. But I did just notice, and I hope that the audio for this video is still pretty good. I just basically noticed that even with a brand new battery and an empty memory card, my recorder that I plug into for my lavalier just now decides to only stay on for about 10 seconds. Didn't notice that, hit record, put it in my pocket. So I hope this audio is as good as I hope, <laughs> but I apologize and I'll have to get this sorted out before the next video. The next question was, when am I gonna test out Campy Eckhart? Uh, that I wish I could and I would love to get a review bike with that. Honestly, a lot of times, especially with the really big companies, it's definitely hard to get a hold of those since I am an, I'm not a journalist or anything like that. And at my subscriber base and YouTube level, it is kind of hard. And typically the brands that I've worked with don't have any bikes that are spec'd with Campy Ekar on a review unit that I'd be able to be supplied with. Next, we have a quick uh, question that we answer very quickly because it's kind of it's a really broad question that I wouldn't be able to, but it was testing compatibility of sealant with patches or darts. Supposedly, the stands dart is supposed to work best with the stand sealant, but in my experience that I've kind of mentioned on this channel, not a real big fan of the dart. If you look at any other manufacturers that have bacon strips or like the Dynaplug, they don't list on there that you have to use certain sealants. In my experience, I've tried stands, orange seal, pan eraser sealant, as well as red monkey sealant but compatibility with anything else, it really, everything works together. It's just the combination of sealant that you're using, if it's gonna clump up naturally. And then if you're using bacon strips, how big they are, what kind, my always go-to recommendation that you've seen on this channel, and by no means paid by Dynaplug, but Dynaplugs, they offer two different size plugs to basically plug up anything and anything bigger than that's gonna take is probably a bad day where you're either gonna have to tube it or patch it from the inside and then tube it. I haven't seen anything that only certain plugs or work or certain sealants work well together. All right, and lastly, we'll uh, start down this in is going to be what non what non cycling YouTubers do I watch? Honestly, I watch a lot of automotive stuff. Besides cycling, I'm really into cars and project builds, just like I'm into project bike builds. So I watch a lot of car YouTubers and it's gonna vary. There's so many things that I watch constantly. I watch YouTube predominantly more so than I watch TV or TV shows. So I consume a lot of content and I'm always watching new people. I'm really into like van life stuff and tiny homes and just kind of creative storage solutions since I do live in a studio apartment. So those are gonna be just things that I generally search. So those are the, some of the things that I tend to watch on YouTube. So I'm gonna finish down this thing in off camera so you don't have to watch boring footage of somebody just messing around and getting frustrated and tinkering with a derailleur. And then I'm gonna go out and ride later today. But I really do appreciate everyone's support. I have, this is, I did take some time off for Memorial Day and didn't post a video. I'm currently trying to stock back up on footage since there's not a lot of review components that are coming in. So I'm trying to work on different ideas or talking series or vlog style videos like this. So comment below if there's other topics that you wanna hear me discuss, or if you want me to do a live stream and talk with you guys, comment all below. I really do appreciate it and I check my comments every single day and it really does help out on the creative kind of process of thinking about what to do because I wanna make content that you wanna watch. So I hope you like this video. Please make sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe and turn notifications on and give this video a like if you haven't already. As well as you can help support me via my spreadsheet. We can get by, buy my Slow But Look Pro merchandise as well as on Patreon where I offer one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultations every single month about anything cycling related for my top two tier levels. And lastly, thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get locked into